April 1, 1933, three young lawyers in Philadelphia merged their practices. Frank Murdoch, Doug Paxson, and Harry Kalish, uh, forming a firm then known as Murdoch, Paxson, and Kalish. When we arrived, it was sort of the golden age of the firm. Uh, I mean, you had a still vigorous Dick Dilworth, and we could tell stories about him uh, all day. Uh, you had Harold Cohn, who was re reputedly, and, and, and in fact, the best litigator in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, if not in the country. The GE price fixing case, I mean, that set the standard for class actions uh, in this country. Our firm has been blessed. It, it is not known just for outstanding legal work, which we do every day, but it's known for our partner's commitment to public service. And then you had Bill Coleman. You know, we haven't mentioned his name yet. I mean, Bill was, uh, you know, a rising lawyer, uh, you know, is really being touted, uh, you know, as really one of the up and coming. Many law firms today proclaim their commitment to advancing minorities and women in the practice of law. But I think if you were to ask me what was, what made the difference in that period of time, I would have to say the introduction of big numbers of women who were practicing, who were just coming out and starting to practice law. The Dilworth firm was way ahead of its time, being a diverse organization as early as the 1950s and having one of the first women, Dolores Slobiter, uh, as a partner in the 1960s. Of course, we all know that uh, uh, Judge Slobiter went on to serve a distinguished career on the Third Circuit Court of Appeals. So we know after World War II, uh, both Harry Kalish and Dick Dilworth came back to, to the law firm. Right, uh, right. And, and shortly thereafter, I think uh, uh, Mr. Dilworth decided to get into politics, and that, That's create, correct. that created some issues, right? Mr. Dilworth came in and, and announced he was running for mayor. My father was delighted, said, certainly, we'll back you the whole way. He said, no, as a Democrat, and that was the end of my father and the, his association with the firm. I think one of the great stories I heard was Howard Hughes was a big mogul and he was in the movie business. And I forget he had a racy movie. He, they had been banned in Boston, which was wonderful news for Howard Hughes because it made everybody want to rush to see his movie. So they came and they said, Mr. Murdoch, we would like to bring this movie into Philadelphia, and we would like you to help us get it approved. Can you do it? And my father said, well, I'll give it a shot. When you look at mid-century America, one of the major players in, in industry was Howard Hughes. And the fact that the Dilworth firm represented Hughes is a very significant uh, piece of our history. 25 lawyers, it's, it's hard to imagine. Uh, and we were always the smallest in size, but as people have always said, we punched way beyond our weight. Well, people knew where to come when, when a, a great asset of the city was at risk. Transformational things in the city that uh, uh, we just got involved with. I mean, that was just part of, our, part of our DNA, I guess. It's not just the big things, it's all the little things that make a difference uh, in how you treat people. And those kinds of traditions are really significant. You know, the, the, the quality of, and the, uh, the legacy of Dilworth and Coleman, and you just can't uh, overestimate that. And that was so significant. It was culture, you know, and Steve, you said it, money holds you together in the best of times, but culture holds you together in the tough times. The importance of understanding firm history is that you can't really see where the firm is today and where the firm is going without a clear sense of where it's been. Our history is a very proud one and one that forms a great foundation for young lawyers today uh, to bring this firm forward 
to the next step in its history.